During the Viking Age, Norsemen, mostly from what is now Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, pillaged, attacked, conquered, and settled many parts of Europe. Generations of people who were not Vikings were scared when they saw Viking longships coming over the horizon. They were known for being cruel and ruthless, and they were such good fighters that the Byzantine emperor in Constantinople put them in his special Varangian guard. But what were these Norsemen like when they were back home? Were there rules and laws? How did they punish those who did wrong? In medieval Scandinavia, the community would meet at the Thing, which was both a legislative assembly and a court where disputes were solved and punishments were given. Many disputes were solved through arbitration, fines, or by telling the person to leave the settlement and live in the wild. This was called outlawry, and it wasn't good for your health, and any citizen could kill you on sight. But in other ways, their ways of getting justice were cruel, bloodthirsty, and sometimes even creative. Here are the six worst Viking sentences, in order of how bad they were. Viking Rodeo If you were a Norseman in the early Middle Ages and someone insulted your wife, what kind of punishment could you have expected for the person who did this? Why, you did it to yourself, of course. A official way to settle a disagreement was through a duel, which was called a home gang. In Sweden and Denmark, a man who was in a duel didn't always have to just give up or lose by getting hit first and going away. Most of the time, his enemy would want to kill him anyway. But the coward had one chance to save his life. He could take part in a cow rodeo. After the fight, a cow was brought into the arena where it happened. Then its tail was shaved and grease was put on it. The man's shoes were also slick with oil, and the cow was hit and poked to make it mad. The rodeo started when the man pulled on the cow's tail, which made it run around and flail like a firework. The man passed the test and was allowed to live if he could hold on to the cow's tail for a certain amount of time. He also got to keep the cow, which was a nice treat. Lucky guy. Harring and feathering. Some scholars think that Sweden's Bjarki laws, which date back as far as 832, said that a man who stole on a trading journey had to be tarred and feathered. After shaving his head and putting tar on it, duck feathers were thrown on top. The other traders then formed two long lines that ran parallel to each other and faced in. The poor guy who was covered in feathers had to run between the men who threw rocks and bricks at him. Anyone who didn't throw something at the fluffy guy could be fined. If the thief got through the gauntlet without dying, he didn't have to go through any more penalties. Ordeal by Fire the ominously named ordeal was a way of punishing Vikings in the late Middle Ages, around the time that Scandinavia began to convert to Christianity. It could be by fire, by eating, or by drowning. If the prisoner lived through the punishment, it was thought that God thought they were innocent and saved them. If the experience led to death, the person was thought to be guilty and got what they deserved. Ordeal by fire meant that the prisoner had to go through some kind of very painful heat exposure. They might be asked to put their hand in a pot of boiling water or oil, walk across hot coals, or take a red-hot iron for a certain number of steps. Slavery In Viking lands, slaves or thralls were either war prisoners, people who had broken the law at home, or people who owed money. Slaves were a very important part of the Viking economy, and there was a network of slave traders from Ireland to Russia. Vikings were often put to work as punishment for a wide range of domestic crimes. For example, a woman who stole could be made to serve the person she stole from. If you were a Viking and had to work as a slave because of a debt or crime, it was not a light sentence. The slaves had almost no rights, and their masters could beat them and treat them badly without getting in trouble. If a male thrall refused to work for his creditor, and there was no other way to solve the problem at the thing, the master could maim or kill the slave on his upper or lower body. Most of the time, thralls would share their living space with pets and livestock. Many slaves who worked for rich masters seemed to be punished forever. Their masters needed someone to help them in the afterlife, so they often buried one or two slaves with them. In parts of Eastern Europe that were ruled by the Vikings, it was common for an old woman called the Angel of Death to kill the slave girls of the master. A couple of men would choke the girl while the old woman stabbed her in the heart inside a homemade tent at the funeral site. The girl's body was then buried with her boss. Amputation 
In Viking societies, sentencing often depended on how important someone was. Thralls were punished more harshly than free men, but if a thrall stole something on their master's orders, the owner was the one who was punished. Different kinds of cutting were used as harsh punishments from time to time and from place to place. Knut, the famous Danish king of England from 1016 to 1035, put in place a harsh rule that lasted until his death. It said that a woman who committed adultery would lose her nose and ears, but men would only get a slap on the wrist. In early medieval Iceland, the Grey Goose Laws said that a slave who killed their master and then tried to escape would have their arms and legs cut off. They were allowed to live, and for the rest of their lives, they crawled around everywhere to warn other people. The Blood Eagle If a Viking crime was bad enough to deserve the death sentence, the person who did it would probably be cut in half. One very horrible way that Vikings put people to death is the stuff of legends. It is said to have been a very bloody way for kids to get revenge on the people who killed their fathers. This is the terrifying Blood Eagle, also called the Blood Red Eagle. If a Viking act was so bad that the person who did it deserved to die, they would probably be cut in half. King Ella of Northumbria was said to have gotten the Blood Eagle punishment from Ivar the Boneless in 867 as payback for killing Ivar's father, Ragnar Lodbrok. The doomed man's back would be cut open, and his ribs would be sawed and pulled out to make the shape of an aquiline. The dead man's son would then stick his hands through the bloody, eagle-shaped ribs and pull out the lungs. Some urban legends say that the victim's hands were used to hang him between two trees and pull him up. The skin on the back was pulled to the side so that it looked like wings. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict. And please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.